Hello and welcome back to your 18 WJTS Inform. I'm Caitlin Nykum and St. Anthony is doing it again this year. If you can't already imagine what we're going to talk about today, the St. Anthony Firemen's Fest for 2024 is this weekend, August 17th. And with us, as always, is Scott Ebelhair from, of course, a lot of different facets, Mr. TV guy per se. You're uh, involved with TV, maybe not on it all the time, but right. thank you for coming and all of your hard work, of course, with the volunteer fire department. And uh, we're excited to talk about this year. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate being here. And when I when you say my hard work, we've got 31 guys that they work just as hard as I do in different ways. I just happen to be the guy that sits in front of a camera and, and, and tells about it. That's right. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I greatly appreciate you sharing that, uh, that humbleness because again we as a normal human normal person who does not have a first responder in their family or anything like that you don't see what goes on uh, with all of you guys individually and as a group so uh, I, I think that kind of really brings us to why the St. Anthony Firemen's Fest is so important for the um, fire department and all of the stuff that kind of goes into it but before we get into the fun parts you guys are celebrating some uh, yearly milestones with a lot of these events this year, right? This is the 32nd time that we've done the uh, Fireman's Fest. It started at the fire station back in 1991. And we added a, a car show later, about 97, and we're on our ninth bar backyard barbecue this year. So the, the three-headed monster, if you will, is the barbecue festival, which starts way early in the morning. The Right after that comes the car show as the cars start to roll in and get judged. And then in the afternoon and evenings, we have food all day. Mm -hmm. But in the evening, we have entertainment and great dinners and starting at 4 o'clock. It, it all culminates in one big event. We used to go start like at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Put the food out, put the bands on the, on the stand, that was it. But uh, as we've grown, we moved to the community center and we've gotten bigger. And I think we've gotten better. And, and our focus is always on family entertainment, mm -hmm. uh, good food, and, and uh, you know having a good safe time. And that's been a big part of, every, of our success. Right. Is there admission fees for just the fest in general or like the individual events that people should expect? No, in general there's not. If you enter a car in a car show or a truck or a motorcycle, there's an admission fee of $15 for that. But the barbecue contest, you can walk around that and, and look at it. Uh, there's also a bracelet you can buy and then, then you can taste. So all the barbecue, there are nine teams right now. You can go from booth to booth and taste whatever they want to put out to be sampled. It may be, they're, 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 they're judged in chili, chicken, pork, and ribs. Ooh. But uh, and they may not have all those things out, but they may have other things out at their booths. And uh, for, I think it's $7, you can go to each booth and, and really fill up and have a good time and see a lot of different ways chili can be made. It'll be, it will be made nine different ways that day. Okay. So you can test your nine different and see who you can vote on best of the best chilies and, and the people choice and things like that. So it's an interactive, very safe thing. Right in the middle of that barbecue contest will be the Rotary Club Cornhole Tournament Yes. that WBDC used to run. Now the Rotary runs that. So mm -hmm. there's something going on inside of something right there. And you can cruise over the car show and motorcycle show and walk through all of that. We have concessions. We'll start in the morning with breakfast, with mm -hmm. this breakfast sandwiches, sausage, egg and cheese, bacon, egg and cheese. We'll, we'll move to hamburgers and cheeseburger when it's appropriate. And then at 11 o'clock sharp, we'll have chicken, uh, like quarters of chicken. And that kind of sets the stage for the afternoon at 4 when we move that chicken dinner into uh, a chicken dinner. We'll have yes. the, the fries, the, the baked beans, the thrash machine tomatoes, all the things that make a whole meal. You guys we'll, are going to yes. pop up a whole restaurant rotation there for the for Saturday. So you got your breakfast, you got your your lunch afternoon, and then you've got the dinners. I think that's uh, for the smaller towns. I'm finding this strategy to be really helpful because I mean, if people want to spend the whole day out at the fest, right. you need your staples. <laughs> and right. Being able to spend money at the fest and in that way to keep refueling that is awesome. Well, and to that, as the, the kids are there, you know, we want the parents there because they're the ones spending the money, obviously, and helping <laughs> us. But the kids are safe. We have them. We have kids games inside the tennis court. There are about seven or eight different games they can play in there. Uh, we have kickball from seven to ten. We have silly safaris at five o'clock. They'll bring animals, so it's it's for the kids to to, to enjoy and adults enjoy the silly safari also um, we have the kickball I mentioned there's just things going on to keep the kids occupied while the parents can be there and having a good time and you know we get towards the, towards the end of the summer I think people are looking to get out maybe not for the last time yet but one of the last times they can get out without having to wear a jacket and right. and, uh, and have a good time and their kids have a good time and schools already started so the timing of the fest couldn't be any better so we try to give something for everyone and a safe event uh, been to places before where the kids are kind of running around on the streets it's, it's, it's uh, that doesn't happen here we've got the 
we've got everything right there on the community center property. And we're really lucky, the community center's great to us. They let us kind of take over that whole property for this this three days here, really. It takes to set up and then well, we'll tear down on Sunday, so about right. four days. So the community center, for those who aren't as familiar, can you give us a kind of some waypoint findings, because I, I mean, for our non-St. Anthony sure. people, it, it could be confusing. We're halfway between Birdseye and Huntingburg. Uh, the the Brestfield Junction is a, a slang for State Road 162 and State Road 64. So if you go east on State Road 64 from Brestville, it would be about two miles on the left. It's at 4665 Cross Street. So it's right off the highway, so you won't be able to miss it. The stage right. is gigantic, and our signage is on the stage. It's the, the tourism helps us put the stage out there. So so well identified once you get to town. The town's not that big, but it's right. right there. It's at the hub of town. And we have ample parking. We're really lucky from uh, the Fishers and Sander Foods, Sander Family Food Market. Yeah. So we have a lot of parking there east of the property that uh, saves a lot of walking. So again, safety and good parking mm -hmm. right there in the middle, right in the hub, right around the community center property. Gen I, I would like to think in general our uh, our, our Dubois County residents, they are they tend to be a bit nosy, so if they see a lot of people and a lot of things going on, they're gonna they're gonna at least turn and look. So maybe, you know, you guys are gonna make a make a little bit of noise, make yourselves known for the weekend. So uh, right. definitely stop in at different times in the day. And you know, you, you really touched on all of these safe and contained uh, kids events that are going on, but uh, the big kids have the beer garden going on that day as well, right? The beer garden opens at 3, it closes at midnight. Yeah, there's a cold beer, and uh, we have some guys that really put on a good good show there. We set up a lot of tables, a lot of family rooms, so you can sit with your family and have a beer, which is okay, mm -hmm. and uh, and have your food inside the community center. If some people want a little air conditioning, right. we can put about 400 people inside there to keep them cool and more more comfortable during the course of the day. So it's a it's a nice, simple, it's a simple setup. It flows well. Uh, we, can, I, we put up about 200 picnic tables times eight. It's about six, room for 1,600 people outside. Right. So, uh, if, you know, as the day goes on, there's, we'll have plenty of tents up to keep, your, keep the, uh, the sun off of people. We try to make the environment, uh, to, keeping in mind some people might be 80 years old there and some people are 10 years old. Try to keep everybody in mind and, and have a good show for them, have great food. You know, the staples, the, the, the music that we'll have, the Studebaker is our is our lead band they start as lead off band they start at 6 30 they run until 8 30 and then after that the rumors the well, studebaker is a jasper favorite everybody mm -hmm. around here knows who studebaker is the rumors come from the new albany jeffersonville area and a, a good regional band they uh, really get energized and get the crowd into the event so we always appreciate having those guys this is the third year we've had the rumors up here so uh, we have good good wholesome big time entertainment Beer, food, I think we got it all covered. Right, I, I think the, uh, the acts that you have on for the evening, those are becoming like festival staples for this Dubois County area, so it, it just kind of makes sense. You get that end of, the, end of the summer, maybe last hurrah, maybe not for some people, and you get to support a really good cause. This event is happening rain or shine, right? It's rain or shine. It looks, it looks favorable at this point. We'll have a little setup uh, in the next couple of days. It may rain off a little bit, but that's our problem. Come Saturday, it's gonna be a great day. Our raffle has been going on. We send out raffle tickets to 800 or so people about three weeks ago. Those tickets continue to come in. We have 168 people who donated to the raffle. Awesome. So uh, it's, a, it's a big part. I mean, that's 50% of our income that day is, is from the raffle, so you can buy tickets day of the day of the event, dollar a piece, or, or six for five dollars. Um, we also have some entertainment sponsors. I won't name them individually, but they're on, on our Facebook. The, but to bring in the rumors, Studebaker, Silly Safari, all the all the entertainment that we have, we have about a dozen people, com businesses within the community that give to our entertainment sponsorship, and, and that's huge. So we can bring this event off without the cost of all the entertainment. That's subsidized by all the generous businesses that give to us. They'll be signed appropriately on the tennis court so you see who those guys are and, and get out and patronize the guys because they sponsor our stage, they sponsor uh, our entertainment, everything that we have there is subsidized by that. Can't do it without community support, and it's exciting to hear that uh, they're able to help you bring these things because, I mean, this is the Fireman's Fest, but this all of this is kind of culminated to fund what goes on behind the scenes that us, um, we may not see at first for your first responder efforts. So 
I mean, at the end of the weekend, where does all this money go? Well, the cost of equipment, as, as everything else out there, the inflation has really hit all of us pretty hard, but fire equipment that used to uh, cost $100,000 costs four times that today. Uh, we bought a truck in 1990 for $100,000. We'll replace it for around $700,000. And we're in a process of replacing that truck now because it, you can't just all of a sudden one day decide, hey, I want to buy a fire truck, and you buy it. It could take two years to get a fire truck. It'll take a while to design that fire truck. We have to raise money for it. So it, and uh, you know, we, somebody a while back, we were having a meeting among people about taxes and everything else, but they, we were questioning, you know, how often do you really need to replace a fire truck? And the, the question was asked within a group, well, what, how old is the car you drive? And right. the, the answer is four to five, four to seven years, because you want to be, you have to have a reliable car. Well, putting a guy in on a burning building with a fire hose, is pretty dramatic, and that the truck better work. It can't break down. You might be, you might lose a life. You, you lose property. So uh, we're kind of up against a wall, and that you have to have this equipment that costs a lot of money to be able to do our jobs appropriately and safely. So it's a, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough chore. And I've been on the fire department a long time, and this is the hardest it's ever been to, to look at what it costs to do what we do. And, right. and so uh, we have to keep that pace. We share our responsibilities with our neighbors. And the, 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 what's amazing about this fest is all the support we get from people that buy raffle tickets. They help us set up picnic tables, tear down picnic tables. They'll come tonight and help prepare the food for tomorrow night. And we as 31 firefighters and our wives or girlfriends, we can't touch this event without the support that we get from every place else. The, the businesses, the, uh, the, the people that donate to our raffle, the people that come to the event. Um, it's, it's almost crazy the support we get, and we certainly appreciate it. We hope we, we're, we're there 24-7, so if, if you fall tonight or ha something goes wrong, if it's 2 o'clock in the morning, somebody's going to be there. So that, that's our return for all that support is that we'll, we'll be there when you need us. That's uh, just so well put, and I, I want to reiterate to viewers that it doesn't matter if it's big city or very small city, like or township, whatever, a little small blip. I live in Hayesville. It's the it's the same small town mentality. It doesn't matter. Those costs they hit and they hit hard in today's world. So being able to help you guys, who can in turn keep everyone safe, is just paramount. Scott, before we before we wrap up here, if anyone wants more information about the um, fire department or, of course, the upcoming fest, how best can they uh, do some research online? Best is go to uh, stanthonyvfd.com. That's our website. Click on events. They'll have all the registrations, the schedule of events. And if you want to contact somebody, there's a contact page with me and my assistant chiefs and everybody that you can give, give your cell phone a call and, and let us know if you need something or have a question. But the, the website is definitely the best. And we're pretty active on Facebook. You can message us on there and I'll get back to you as fast as I can. So we're in contact. A lot of people know us also or ask a firefighter. They'll, they'll have the answer for you. And uh, you know, we look forward to it. We look forward to a good day. We appreciate the support of the public and, and uh, we, we vow to keep going and keep getting better. Very good. Uh, we, of course, thank you for your team and the service you guys provide every single day. And we hope you have a fantastic fest this year. It sounds like another another one in the bags, I'm going to say, without knocking on wood. But, uh, I mean, you guys, you've had many different years um, to really bring it up. So that's uh, just phenomenal. But thank you for sharing all this fun stuff with us today. Well, thanks for having us. I appreciate it. 32nd year, and we'll look forward to next year. Exactly. After Sunday. After Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> that's very well put. But thank you so much. And thank you so much at home for watching. This has been your 18 WJTS Inform. The St. Anthony's Fireman's Fest is again this Saturday, August 17th, all day long. Make sure to plan your trip and make sure you're out there this weekend. And we are local people watching local people.